who've said to someone complaining about kids these days. Story 1. Boy, my ex-boyfriend and I were on a date and we were making out in the park. Nothing lewd, just kissing and some dumb giggles. Until this woman, her husband, and her son says, Jesus Christ, please stop doing those disgusting things in front of me and my baby. Kids and teenagers these days are unbelievable. We just got up kind of mad, but not in the mood to deal with her stuff, and decided to walk around some more times before leaving. Until we found her again, making out with her husband in a heck of hot session. We were able to see their tongues and some saliva. Ugh. While their kid was just sitting awkwardly, obviously uncomfortable, my ex was one smug idiot, but I love him, and he straight up raised his voice to say, Jesus Christ! Adults these days. It was a pretty good day. The woman and her husband saw us, obviously embarrassed, and we both just walked away. I'd like to think that the old couple in the story wasn't just being hypocritical, but rather they were inspired by the younger couple and decided, hmm, that actually looks like a lot of fun. We should give it a go. But also, blame these guys for going to the wrong place to make out. Everybody knows you don't go to the park, you go to make out reef. Story 2. A Gen X woman, 40-ish years old, saw her nephew and niece watching a YouTube video of some gamer and started pointing it out to her friends. Gen X woman. Did you know kids these days watch videos of other people playing video games? Gen Xers. Laughing. Me. And what? You watch sports, don't you? Gen X woman. That is not the same thing. Me. It 100% is, though. You buy jerseys so you can pretend to be on a team that you can't qualify for so that you can cheer on teenagers playing a sport that you don't play. Plus, if I don't know if I want to buy a $50 game, I don't have to. I can watch a playthrough and see if it's worth it. Gen X woman. That's not what they do. Me. So what? At least if I buy the game, I can play it nearly as well as the people that I watch. If I got you a football, could you kick a 40-yard field goal? This one hits home for me especially. Uh, obviously, I work on YouTube, so I'm very close with stuff like that. But I don't feel like I could ever talk about it in detail with, like, my in-laws, for instance. They would just feel like it's a waste of time. Yet, they're sitting in their living room watching sports, like, 24-7. So it's like, yeah, what's the difference? Story 3. Not mine originally. I found it someplace, but I can't remember where. Probably the internet once upon a time. I liked it so much, I have since adopted it as mine. However... Millennials. Usually every generation has it better than the ones that came before. That's progress. That's as it should be. Millennials are probably the generation more thoroughly messed up by their predecessors than any other. Massive debt, ruined environment, overpopulation, wealth disparity, and for all that, the generations that are messing them over call them spoiled and entitled. A great quote I read once went something along the lines of, we knew those participation trophies were BS when you gave them to us, but we accepted them because it seemed important to you. If we'd known you'd hold them over our heads someday, we would have told you to shove them up your butts. This story, at least for me as a millennial, is both funny and sad. It's true that millennials have been dealt a difficult hand in many ways, and yet they're constantly criticized for being entitled and lazy. The participation trophy line is especially poignant. It's a reminder that millennials didn't create the culture of instant gratification. They were simply raised in it. Story 4. Me and two of my friends were sitting on a bus. It was a Friday afternoon and we were going to a concert, so each of us had a couple of beers in our hands. Three old ladies got on the bus and told us that we should give them our seats. Since half of the seats on the bus were empty, we just told them to sit somewhere else. They sat down behind us and started poop-talking really loudly about us and our generation. They said that we are lazy drunkards, who are good for nothing, the usual stuff. They were ranting for a good ten minutes, until one of them said something like, What when they say? I hope when they will be this old, they will know what being treated like this feels like. At this moment, a thirty-something-year-old guy who sat near to them stood up and said something like, God, I'd rather end my life at 60 so I won't become a bitter old crone like you are. Then got off the bus. The old hags were speechless. Story 5. A few weeks ago, I walked up in line at the express checkout in the grocery store to hear the two seniors in front of me complaining about kids these days. Conversation went from how rude they are, to how stupid they are, to how inconsiderate they are. And then the old lady unpacked 14 items out of her cart onto the belts in the 10 items or less lane. 
Actually, it should be 10 items or fewer. While still griping about how young people are inconsiderate. I literally laughed out loud. She looked at me, looked at her items, and then the full context of what she was doing registered. The look on her face was amazing. I didn't say anything else. I just smiled at her, and she turned her back to me and shut the heck up. Ooh, yeah, this story perfectly illustrates the irony of older people complaining about young people being inconsiderate while simultaneously behaving in a rude and inconsiderate manner themselves. It's always satisfying to see someone get a taste of their own medicine. Story 6. I was on the train reading a book, and an older woman made the comment that kids these days are always on their phones instead of books. I responded and told her that phones now have the ability to store books. And I told her what I was reading, and then asked her what book she was reading, since she was such a bookworm. She had no answer, since she didn't have a book. So I said, Ugh, baby boomers these days. Always have their nose in other people's business, instead of a book. She called me rude, and I told her to please refrain from speaking to me, because I was in the middle of a really good book. This reminds me of that scene from the Beatles' A Hard Day's Night, where Ringo's getting scolded by that old man for having his nose in a book and reading too much, when he should be out for a walk instead. It seems like no matter what generation you are, the elders always chastise you for not doing the activities they did when they were growing up. In the future, when our kids have their brains plugged into the singularity, we'll be griping about how they should be spending their time on something worthwhile, like mindlessly consuming internet content. Story 7 some lady at the library was complaining about how children are using iPads too young and how they shouldn't be using technology at all because it's bad for them. I told her that the kids that are using iPads at the age of three are going to be the same adults who invent the most amazing advanced technology that will change the world. And then I offered her help to send an email because she's too old to know. <laughs> oh man. It's always amusing when someone who's technologically illiterate tries to lecture others on the dangers of technology. Story 8. Shut the F up, George. You did coke when you were their age. To this day, I still think about that grandma at the grocery store. What a great wife. Context. I was shopping with my girlfriend. We were laughing, and I accidentally bumped the old geezer's cart. He flipped out with a whole rant about how horrible young people are today. His wife sat him the frick down and put him in his place. Story 9. My butthole uncle complained about kids these days in front of his mother, who is 96 and still has all her sass. She responded with, Yeah, because you were just a ray of sunshine to raise. For the record, the uncle is a butthole completely of his own volition. I don't know how he turned out that way, considering the wonderful woman who raised him. Story 10. A keynote speaker was basically talking crap on millennials at a corporate function I attended. My boss was like, Wow, he really hit the nail on the head with your generation. My response was, We didn't raise ourselves with these standards. You all brought us up this way. Actually made him pause and consider that. Yeah, that's pretty frustrating. It's like older generations criticize millennials for being entitled and lazy, but they never acknowledge the ways in which they themselves have contributed to those traits. They gotta recognize that the younger generation didn't create the culture they were raised in. And they're doing the best that they can with what they've been given. Story 11. Young guy on my team at work. Others were complaining about millennials in 2018. I pointed out that being not 38 yet also makes them millennials. Story 12. Ugh, you guys are so spoiled nowadays. Me looking for an apartment near me. These apartments are over $2,000 a month. Well, maybe you should be looking at a studio. This is one with two other roommates. 2000 is just a third of the rent. Well, good luck. How much did your apartment cost? Which one? I had several when I was younger. Story 13. Not my quote, but <laughs> great nonetheless. Old people talk crap about this generation until they suddenly turn off their Wi-Fi and can't remember how to turn it back on. And then I'm suddenly the master of information and resources. Story 14. Old guy. Kids these days don't know how to save up for college the old-fashioned way, through odd jobs and hard labor. My brother, I am literally mowing your lawn to save up for college. Story 15. <laughs> I really have no room to talk. In my day, people thought mullets were cool and girls aquanetted their bangs to the ceiling. Every generation thinks the next ones are the ones who are bat-poop crazy. Funny thing is, mullets are actually making a comeback nowadays. 
Who would have thought they ever would? Story 16. Things were hard for you. Things are also hard for modern kids. It's just a different kind of hardship. Story 17. The children now love luxury. They have bad manners. Contempt for authority. They show disrespect for elders and love chatter in place of exercise. Children are now tyrants, not the servants of their households. They no longer rise when elders enter the room. They contradict their parents, chatter before company, gobble up dainties at the table, cross their legs, and tyrannize their teachers. Socrates, 469-399 to BC. Story 18. Chill out, it's their first time too. Story 19. Just remember that when we were kids, we wore parachute pants, listened to a flock of seagulls, and thought the California raisins were cool. Me, responding to someone my age, belittling kids of today. Story 20. My coworker said that millennials were lazy and entitled. She's 26. I pointed out that she was a millennial, and she replied saying I was more of a millennial than her. I'm Gen Z. Story 21. The facts. Violent crime is down compared to when Gen Xers, like me, were kids. Teen pregnancy is down. If kids being whiny and disrespectful and addicted to screens is the price we have to pay for that, then yes, please, I'll have the whining. It's a lot better than being graped or red rummed. Story 22. My response to whenever my parents, teachers, or elders in general say this stuff is, adults these days can't teach their kids a thing. Example, say my parents use a word I've never heard of, ask them what it meant, they go for the kids these days thing, and I go, yes, you're right, kids don't know a thing these days. They could have known that if their parents taught them. Oh, I like that response. Puts the responsibility back on the adults to actually teach and educate the younger generation, instead of just blaming them for not knowing something. Story 23. This generation has no respect, blah blah blah. Spoken by a grown man with a useless son. So, who raised this generation? Story 24. You were complaining about African Americans calling for equal rights when you were their age, Harold. People in nursing homes are savage. Story 25. Kids are supposed to be stupid. What's your excuse? Story 26. My mom used to call me a son of a witch, so I just left it at that. Story 27. I know. Aren't children amazing? They're so much more fun than adults. Adults are so cynical and judgmental. Kids are like a breath of fresh air. They grow up too fast these days. Childhood is meant for enjoyment. Story 28. I normally just roll my eyes and say, Yeah, because we were so much better. Story 29. Hey, shut up. Story 30. I say, the one I raised is great. How'd you do with yours? Story 31. Was at a punk concert, swinging udders, and one of my friends, being a first-generation punk like myself, said, These young punks don't have no respect. I replied, No respect. It's punk rock, man. Everyone started laughing, and we enjoyed the gig. Story 32. Personally, I like the way they're becoming activists. It shows they care. Story 33. Turns off life support. Story 34. Want us to get off your lawn? Story 35. This was on a thread on the internet years ago now. Someone who was probably in the baby boomer generation was complaining about how kids get participation trophies for everything. Someone replied, Who gave us the participation trophies? We didn't ask for them. Story 36. Those who criticize this generation forget who raised it. Story 37. Didn't you guys have pet rocks in response to an adult having a temper tantrum over fidget spinners? Story 38. That's what someone said about you when you were growing up. Story 39. Except for kids falling off bikes. <laughs> Man, I could watch kids fall off bikes all day. I don't give a care about your kids. Story 40. They'll be wiping your butt someday. Story 41. I've heard people call millennials weak. I find that funny because it kind of seems to me like millennials are capable of changing with the times and keeping up with progress while older generations refuse to progress and shun anyone who has. Just because we don't have to walk in the snow 10 miles to school doesn't mean we would be incapable of that. Plus, why the heck do they talk about things like that longingly? Story 42. How old are you? 19. 
When I was your age, I was 20. Story 43. Whenever my peers complain about misogynist SoundCloud rap, I remind them our generation listened to Snoop Dogg declare witches ain't poop but tricks and dongs. Story 44. Nice try, kids these days. Story 45. Her. Oh my god, the Fortnite dance is so stupid. Him. Shut up, Martha. I still have that video of you doing the Macarena. Her. Silence. Overheard by me at a local coffee shop. Story 46. Not mine. Grandma. Kids are less productive than when I was young. Kid. Shut up. When you were a kid, Coke had cocaine in it. Story 47. Funnily enough, it was on Facebook. A post about millennials taking basic skills classes like cooking, sewing, and laundry, etc. The post was something like, Oh my god, millennials, how useless and ridiculous. The response was that the current generation was so proactive, they sought out the skills that the previous generation failed to teach them. Hot dang. Story 48. Your generation is soft. It's all the participation trophies you were given. Sure, but who gave us those participation trophies again? Story 49. If I had the courage, I'd probably say, You know, I bet your parents said the same about your generation, and their parents said the same about theirs. Story 50. Once my friend's dad was talking about how kids these days move out way too late, and my friend's older brother said, Well, back then, rent cost about 75 cents, so how about no? Died laughing for 8 billion years. Story 51. Don't be envious. Story 52. I overheard this in a guy complaining about how kids these days think gay marriage should be allowed, and the person responded, at least we weren't racist and sexist. Story 53. I'm Gen Z, and I can't wait to hear the stuff we get. Story 54. I'm living in Germany, and there was an old man complaining for no reason to a friend in me, saying something like, with soldiers like you, there is no war to win. My friend looked him in the eyes and said, and with soldiers like you, we lost two of them. Story 55. My grandma said something along the lines of, Young people are so easily offended these days. So I reminded her that when she was born, women were being arrested for wearing pants in public. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.